There aren't that many games that make escape sequences so tense and exciting as the Little Nightmares games do. While I do prefer great level design over atmosphere and immersion, I simply can't ignore how solid this overall franchise is. I love how they play with light and darkness in both games. In the first game you have a lighter as your light source, and in the second game you eventually get a flashlight to light up all these dark areas. These games are so incredibly moody, creepy, but also charming at the same time. And this is what I really appreciate about them. I also really enjoy the story. It's a bit vague, but it has so many twists and turns and horrific events that it becomes really interesting and captivating. You'll never know what to expect next and if it's going to be even more creepier than the previous section. But you will always know they will not let you down with the storytelling and the overall presentation. The monster design is also amazing. Every single encounter with one of them is memorable. And even though these games have a very predictable formula of going from monster to monster, some of these monsters make a return or show up when you don't expect them. And this makes these games very exciting and tense. I like the stealth gameplay because it gives me an opportunity to take my time to observe their movement and behavior. And sometimes it's really creepy, but also comedic. And I just love the attention to detail, like the weird sounds they make, or how they act out their tasks. But nothing makes me more excited than the escape sequences in this game. Yes, it's a lot of trial and error gameplay. But I really don't mind it, because there is just so much to see on your screen, and it all goes by so quickly. The attention to detail is insane. I'm not only talking about the visuals, but also about the sound design and the creepy and sometimes even desperate way the monsters are trying to capture you. I enjoy these escape sequences so much. They are never boring and they always succeed in making me feel scared but excited. Especially if I don't see them coming. The overall level design is a bit basic though. And the lack of inventive puzzles is a real shame. Because it does hurt my overall enjoyment while playing these games. It's by no means bad, but it's a bit bland compared to the rest of what these games have to offer you. It's a lot of hitting a button with a throwable item or climbing up cardboard drawers to reach higher places. The 3D environment makes it also sometimes a bit harder to navigate through an area or to move and make jumps in general. It can all feel a bit clunky, just like the combat in the second game for example. I really don't know why they felt the need to add combat, but it's not really engaging and when you mess up the timing once, you have to restart the sequence again. Thankfully it's not a core gameplay mechanic, but it's for sure one of the biggest gripes I have with the sequel. Both games have sometimes trouble with using the 3D environment to its full potential. There is in my opinion nothing wrong with the controls, but the 3D gameplay makes some sequences so much harder than they should be because of the depth perception. You get stuck behind a lot of objects, you feel a lot of jumps, you miss a lot of throws, you can't find the right angle in time to stop these mannequins with your flashlight, or you can't find your way because you don't know what is interactable for example. It can cause a bit of frustration, and it hurts the gameplay a bit, but the positives really outweigh the negatives in these games. The Little Nightmare games are still without question one of my favorite cinematic puzzle platformers out there, and while the sequel has a lot more content and some really memorable encounters, especially the final area is one I really find fascinating, I still prefer the first game, because the story and the events feel more cohesive, 
and it doesn't have combat. So in general, the Little Nightmares games know how to do great storytelling and memorable action or escape sequences. There aren't many games that manage to give me such a great feeling of immersion, even though the gameplay itself is not that special in my opinion. The lack of inventive puzzles and the inclusion of 3D environments are the biggest issues I have with these games, but I still would be a fool to not recommend them. Their audiovisual design is amazing. Their attention to detail, like the design, movement and the behavior of the monsters and creatures is immaculate. And the world itself is beautiful, but disturbing at the same time. Both games are just a memorable experience from start to finish. And I really appreciate how unique their presentation is. I will never get bored of this interesting world, and there's no doubt in my mind that the third game will deliver as well. I'm not a big horror fan, but these games have found the perfect balance between grotesque and playfulness, and that's something I will always remember when I think about this franchise.